Lawson's red, that means we're actually recording. We're recording. So, Rachel Lawson and the open badges from Mozilla, I could probably take it. us away. It's not badges, it's badges. Badges? <laughs> okay. And he did that because someone got very confused in the day when I was trying to explain what I was going to do. Um, okay, so... Hi, I'm Rachel. Um, I'm a fairly recent freelance uh, web developer, business analyst, kind of all sorts of things. Uh, I have a fairly wide, um, strange history through coming through to web development. So, uh, through all sorts of things, pharmaceutical companies, uh, defence companies, all sorts of things. So it's been kind of a bit bizarre my background, but uh, really enjoying Drupal now. Uh, a recent client. Uh, it, for me, it's Cardiff University, and been working with them and looking at learning and e-learning, particularly. Um, we spent a lot of time looking at this, and what we found was the way that you learn, the things that you learn, the experiences that you have, are extremely diverse. The things that you use every day come from experiences, not just from academia and from your computer science or software engineering degree or whatever that you you might have as part of your uh, how you got to be in the agency or working as the duty person that you are. It, it's so much more than that. It's, it's all of the experiences you have in life. Um, so it, it very much is a diverse kind of thing. Yeah? I, I sat down and started looking at places that I've been learning uh, through my life, and it turned into this crazy list. Uh, no, that's wrong. <laughs> okay, so we started off, obviously you've got academia, going on school, college, all that type of things, but then you've got things like scouting and guiding, uh, and so on. You've got, I, I used to work, I started working um, as an instructor teaching IT to children at an outdoor centre. Um, I eventually ran the IT side of things, but I ended up also getting involved in other things. So, becoming a fencing instructor, qualified fencing instructor, it's kind of a bit bizarre. <laughs> Teaching fencing to seven-year-olds and things like this, it's, it's an experience. It's much like you, it's much like running a meeting. Uh, <laughs> with some places, I've got to say. Um, things like when I was at the MOD, getting security cleared, all that type of stuff. It's good experience working in all those different places. Uh, some stuff's more computer, so I didn't start off as a developer. I didn't start off as a business analyst. I started off as a systems engineer um, doing Microsoft uh, software and servers and so on years ago, oh my God, in the 90s. And in the bell, I remember in the bell, God, I could probably still set one up if I needed to. Uh, and then things like I've got like agile project management qualifications and so on. So all these different things are useful to what I do now in Drupal. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got all the experiences that you do in Drupal, places you go, camps you go to, and so on. So everything's really diverse. Even things like um, <laughs> jumping out the plane. <laughs> Kind of makes it easier to do something like this because I hate standing up and presenting, I must admit. Um, just sort of kind of weird things that people do over their lives. It's all relevant. But the trouble with that is when I go, suppose I was to go for a job, an actual real funny job, um, how do I tell people about these things? Where's the evidence? Well, the reality is, it's spread all over. I'll admit now, if somebody asked me for my certificates for school and college, I wouldn't have a clue where they were. Yeah? I wouldn't even be completely sure who to contact for my A-levels and things like that. So, uh, it would be interesting. Uh, there's lots of people, and also, who's endorsing you? I think it's like, People send you endorsements on LinkedIn. They've never even seen you in those things. It drives me nuts. It's like, oh, such and such endorses you for this. And you're like, 
you have never seen me do that. So what's the point in it? It's completely pointless. Okay. So when you talk about evidence of learning, you need to do. You obviously need a learning, but you also need someone to say that learning is real. Okay. You need someone to say, yeah, this person did do this. I can prove they did it, and so on. But you also need it to be available. And you also need to be able to advertise it. When I've been, and I grew up in Leeds, even though I live in Norfolk now. And I asked my mum for some old uniforms. She didn't have any for most of my annoyance, but she did have her little brothers. So, <laughs> uh, all the badgers. I see the uniforms tiny little like that. Hilarious. Because uh, he's like huge now. Um, all these are evidence. I don't even know what these are. Because he's younger than these. I think they changed or something. Um, he would, he would, when he went to, I think they're cub uniforms. When he went to cubs, they were. Every day you'd go in there, and the evidence of your learning was on your shoulder all the time. Yeah? Everybody knew. Someone walked in, knew curve, etc. They knew we were the kind of people who knew bits and pieces. Uh, we don't really have anything similar to Drew I did kind of notice this uh, as been going on. OK. Uh, my, my, new, my new favorite is the little, my hungry caterpillar crab. I found him, stole it from my goddaughter, she's going to kill me. <laughs> it's in one of her books. But you, can, you kind of do collect these things from all over. Now, there's no evidence, there's no one saying, there's no test that I really did go to Amsterdam. OK? Oh, actually, no, I couldn't have gone to Amsterdam. Yeah, is it? Yeah. But <laughs> there's no evidence that I did give blood. I don't know why I stood that on there. Um, other than, you know, I had to go there to get the sticker. Yeah? So it's not a foolproof mechanism. But it's interesting looking around at people's laptops of where they've been and their history and so on. It's just something I find interesting. Um, so, I think a lot of people have been thinking about this recently, certainly some people at Mozilla. And they did something that they called Open Badges. It's kind of a, it's a technical standard and also a central point for people to get involved uh, in Open Badges. So it's a method of showing achievement. Okay. We call it badges, the fact that it's badge is kind of irrelevant. It's a method of storing and saying, this person's done these things. Because lots of, people, lots of places can give you a list of things that they've done. But what you really want is a central place to display them. OK? Um, so open badges uh, is a technical standard. Um, and it provides two things. It, just, it, it provides a method for, for a website to behave as one or more of two things. Uh, an issuer who can issue badges and say, hey, this person has achieved this standard certificate, whatever. Okay. And also then display those badges, either from that person or sort of from that website, or from other websites too. So for an example, uh, the website I'm going to show you in a moment issues badges. It can also display badges. You could have something like LinkedIn, which displays badges. Someone puts in their details of where to find their badges, one central location, which I'll, I'll show you in a point in a while. And it will show all the badges from all the issuers that that person has made public. Okay, which is really useful. Um, and that's basically what I just said. And uh, just so you know what it looks like, if you log on to backpack.openbadges, it's a place where you can store any badges that have been issued to you. Okay? You don't have to store them, you don't have to use that, but you can. 
Yeah. So I went in quickly for this presentation, acquired two badges, which are there. One's called Badges 101. The idea is that you can go and see to prove, to prove the technology, to prove the system. Yeah. Um, so it asks you a few questions, issues about it. Then what you can do is you can choose to create a collection. So I've created some random badges, a collection. I've added these two badges and then made it public. And then anybody can look at my email address, my account on, on the backpack, and see what badges I've made public. Yeah? It's kind of the way it works. And all it is in the background, is a bit JSON and a PNG image file for the badge. Okay, uh, you can probably you can get you can get as complicated with it as you want. You can do a lot. You can uh, say quite a lot of interesting things within within the data. Yeah, about the history of the badge. You can revoke badges, all that type of stuff. Yeah, you can sign them. You know, cryptographically sign them within the badge pin and so on. But the basics are you can issue a badge, you can display them, and all it is is a bit of JSON. Yeah? Okay. So we wanted to use this with a, a slightly unusual group of people, health professionals, which are sometimes the most curmudgeonly <laughs> group of people. Uh, for this type of thing. Uh, I worked with the Cardiff University on and off for a couple of years at least uh, on different things uh, at the hospital there. And they do education purely in pain management. Uh, they're kind of one of the, not just the country's um, leading pain education places, but actually the world's. And it's pretty much, strangely, Cardiff and Edinburgh and also Australia are like three massive places that do uh, this kind of thing. Cardiff's the only one that actually does training for free. Everybody else charges. Um, so it's, oh, that's my understanding at the moment. It might well change. Uh, so well, Cardiff will always be free. Um, so <laughs> they do this. And they wanted to provide, in fact, it was their idea to use open badges to provide just another way, another piece of technology that the, that the health professionals could use as evidence that they've done pain management, continuing professional development. Uh, health professionals are required to do a certain number of hours CPD per year uh, to demonstrate that they are up to date with bits and pieces. Um, so, uh, we built this website, uh, Pain Community Centre. It's, it's in its like third iteration now since it started. It's been on the Drupal 6 site years ago. Um, and it does things like it has both public CPD courses, ones for any health professionals to, do, to use, but it also has ones that are private as well. So um, specific groups can request particular training courses and then kind of will create that training course and then put it on the website, but just for the users that they choose, if that makes sense. Um, and so you can go into a into join, join one of the CPD courses, you can, it just runs it through so you get some learning objectives, you've got uh, the materials which Oh yeah, you can see the materials pretty good too. And then you have to do some sort of certification. That doesn't get you the, uh, you have to do some sort of quiz to prove the thing. What's important for them is that people then do what's called a learning reflection. So uh, once they finish the quiz, they'll then be able to create, uh, well actually they're just new learning reflection notes, um, and actually talk about their learning which is very important for health professionals to do, is that they do that. Um, so they go ahead and do that, and then it issues a certificate. Um, but it also issues, depending on what they've done, badges, which they can then use. 
who then goes on to explain what another the badges are. There's videos on there and so on. These badges are pretty new, and most people haven't heard of them. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be here today. Uh, so it does that. And it then, badges, they're there to advertise people's, how shall I put this, people's expertise, so that people can increase their profile. Health professionals really like improving their profile and becoming what they like to be, what's often called key opinion leaders within a subject. Yeah, uh, That can lead to getting to meet more people, leads to better professional uh, contacts and moving up the ladder and so on. So being able to demonstrate that you've done things and to be known within, I nearly said the industry there, but that's almost kind of wrong. Um, but knowing more about pain and being seen as someone to talk to is important. So having a way of having a profile on a, you know, on what is regarded within the within the pain area, a major website, is a good thing for them. And it will list not only their professional profile that they can write themselves, but also it will list their badges. Is this going to work? Why is that not going? Yeah. So, is it, excuse me, that's supposed to be. Is that moving? Yes. Yeah. So, there's a list of. Sorry. Uh, there's a list of badges that they can earn. Okay. So, this person, me actually, um, has only earned one badge because, well, I don't really know that much about pain. Uh, well, I don't know about pain, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but not, <laughs> not how to manage it, clearly. Um, so, what we have is a list of badges, and I could, I could take a CPG. It's not going to stop me taking continuing professional development courses and earning those badges. That's cool. You can do that. Um, and, and, and so on. There's badges there, though. I can't scroll up because it's a video. Uh, there are badges there that are not just about completing the CPE, though. Yeah? Because remember, we were talking about the diversity of learning earlier and the different ways that you uh, learn. Some of the badges are around participating. So, badges like if you take part in the uh, what's called the talk, basically discussion. Uh, there's a discussion area. Uh, I can't move the mouse there. Can I do that now? <coughs> there's a discussion area called talk, and that has just people kind of going on a bit. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and. Anne's like the, uh, the reader, it's kind of like one below a professor at Cardiff University who, who like, runs the website, uh, or runs the entire courses and everything there, um, and the various things that they're talking about, something about the BMJ, God, uh, <laughs> as it said, uh, doctors are general. Uh, so taking part in that section will bring you knowledge and etc. and experience. So we award badges for taking part. That makes sense. Does it make sense? It's, the, it's thinking about well what actually is learning. And then awarding badges to that extent. It's like reputation, like on other forums they have a reputation. It's exactly like reputation. Oh. It's exactly like reputation. Yeah, but when, when, when we build back a bad site, it's not just as simple as do this, get that. You need to think about what actually is the learning. So, so for example, on each, they don't get a badge for each CPD course. They get badges specifically for completing, say, five CPD courses on the same subject, like chronic pain, uh, uh, palliative care, that type of thing. Okay. 
So it's, it's, it's kind of getting them to keep coming to the site. Yeah? Um, I go back to this. Do I come back to what it was? Yep. That's good. Okay, so I don't know if you can see on here, where you have badge, it's just on this website. Yeah? What you would want to do is if you want to share that achievement, that badge, on LinkedIn or some other displayer, this could be an NHS thing in the future, quite possibly could be as it happens. Um, then you need to get it up to Mozilla's backpack or maybe other backpacks in the future, but Mozilla's is kind of the key word. I can't see that changing, to be honest. Um, because it works well, to be honest, it's really easy. So you need to send it to Mozilla's pack, backpack. So you click on the link and it asks you. Do you want to accept this badge into your Amazon backpack? You say yes. I'm not going to because I don't want it in a backpack, so I can't do this again. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's in your backpack, and then you can display it in other places. Yeah? When you go to LinkedIn, it will be displayed on your LinkedIn profile if you've added that block on your profile from open badges, etc. Yeah? Um, so when you do that, Mozilla takes a note of where the badge came from, the criteria that made the badge be awarded. Uh, it keeps a link back to uh, some JSON that stays on the server, or in reality, Drupal is generated whenever it's asked for. Uh, some, some JSON there that says, yeah, this badge is a real badge, we certify it, etc. Okay? Um, and so on. And then, if I'd added that badge, and I'd put it into one of my public collections, it would appear here. So I'm displaying all of my backpack badges at the bottom. Okay? Uh, and then, for the users, it then displays a list of who's getting badges, what badges have been recently earned, and stuff like that. Is to start up from management tools and so on. Uh, now, all the badges are, all the achievements, it's actually achievements. There's a module called achievements. I want to change the name of it. Okay? So, you look at org achievements, you just need to go install that module, about 70 billion patches. <laughs> to make it actually work. <laughs> and then there's a achievements module to open badges bridge, which it took me what, ages to work out what that meant. AMOBP is another module, and some more patches. Uh, I think I did a couple of these. I think I did those two. I can't remember. Uh, I'm not sure about the top one. Put those in. You need to define the badges, and I'll show you that in a minute. And you need to display them. Yeah, it's kind of it. Yeah, this is the open badges does the rest. Yeah, all you're doing is making the data available in the right place. Probably the biggest job of all this was for the learning technologist at Cardiff University to draw the badges. I think he had a lot of fun doing it actually. Um, so I also made some different pages and some blocks to put on different parts of the website to show people their badges. Yeah, There are some blocks and pages that come automatically as part of the achievements module, but I know I had to change them. Uh, I just don't like them. Uh, but the data is the data, so it's just show it. Yeah? Hook. Uh, you, you know. Show a block and write some code. So go to uh, go through all the badges. Uh, I'm trying to work out why. Probably do a Drupal Cup Yorkshire. 
Absolutely. Mm. We'll come on to that in a minute. Uh, so, I'm going the wrong way because you can't see that, can you? The badges, just to show you some badges, all you have to do is there's a hook for achievements info where you define a array that, you, that describes the badges that you want. Where to find the images, you need a locked and an unlocked image. image. Um, and for Mozilla Open Badges to use them, they have to be a certain, at least a certain size, and they have to be PNG files. Yeah? The achievements module by default currently uses a JPEG, and it won't upload that onto Open Badges. That's the only thing to remember. Um, because it, it stores, the achievements module will store anything that you write in here. Okay? So criteria is a array key that actually isn't part of the achievement module's requirements, but it was one of mine. Uh, well, actually not one of mine, but one of Cardiff University's. So we wanted to add it, so we did. Um, and it kind of describes it in a slightly different way. I don't fully understand why they did it, but it's an easy thing to add. It didn't actually make any difference as far as the workability of Jenkins module. It just did it. Um, and then we can put it there. There's the concept of earning points. Now, on the Cardiff University uh, website, we've turned off um, the, dis the display of any kind of leader leaderboards. That's to, to end users, that's not what they're into. And they're very keen not to show lead boards to end users. Because um, they didn't really want it sounded too much like game gaming for them because of their specific target audience that don't want that. And there's the achievements pointless module that just switches it off. And it's gone. Um, however, the points are still stored, so it can be useful. And they do use them internally just to give an idea of the value of the things that they've done. Um, there's a couple of others where... I'm trying to look for one now. Ah, there's a thing called storage. So here, we're talking about an achievement of when you've done more than one CPD course. Yeah? Um, so what we want is somewhere to store that we've done a CPD course. Yeah? Um, so it has that concept in the achievements module, and you can just use it. You just need to give it a name. And then all the way down here, uh, well, the, the talk will give you an idea. So I've got a node insert, so I'm adding a node. Yeah? And here we're saying if the node is type status, which is the talk state, talk thing. Uh, story the talk thing, how many times I've added something, and count it up. If the user's done a certain number of talk items, on what badge? Yeah? And it will automatically do it. There isn't any, it's, I think all that happens is automatically the user gets a little pop up on the screen saying, hey, I've got a badge, and then sends you off to the page where you can see them if you like. Yeah? Um, so it's pretty easy to do. Yeah? It isn't complicated to, to build something to do this. And it's largely down to your imagination of what um, how you want to award them. And thinking, okay, well they want to award a badge if these things happen. Okay, well what are the hooks in Drupal that I need to think about? It's usually something like node insert, comment insert, and flags. So with the CPDs, what I actually do is when they are awarded something, I give them, a, I, I set a flag, yeah, um, as part of the CPD process. And all I do is watch out for that flag being set, check which course it is, check which where it fits into a taxonomy, award a badge. That's all I do, yeah. Um, so that's not too bad. And then it's kind of going okay. Um, 
So if I go back to here, looking at how the website worked, I'm kind of reflecting upon how it went. I, I, I always like to look and think, oh, well, if I've done this sooner, they might have done that in the future. Did I need actually the achievement module on any of Actually, no. All I need to do is produce JSON in the right place and tell open batches about it. It's not, you don't have to use those two modules. It's, you're not restricted to that. It doesn't make it kind of easy, but it also means you've got to do with certain wrinkles of the achievement module. Yeah? Um, and getting your head around that. It's not possibly as, as flexible as you might like it to be. Uh, but there's nothing stopping you implementing badges any other way you like. As long as you go to the Mozilla Open Badges website and read the spec and say, I can do that. Because outputs and JSON outputs from a from a um, Drupal opening possible. Yeah. You just know what to put in. And then stick out the the, the JSON. Um, Open badges is still kind of new. It really is kind of still kind of happening. There's quite a lot of e-learning places that really get on board. It tends to be at the younger end of the target, you know, sort of younger people that uh, they're targeting currently. It's kind of technology. Yeah, younger people tend to accept technology becomes a lot more than I do. Uh, so that's that's just kind of the way it is. Um, Card kind of making sure to involve the key opinion leaders within the area of pain management in this, because that's a good way. If they're talking about it, it helps people who are not the key opinion leaders then look at their peers and say, "Ah, oh, I don't know. If they're talking about it, why not I?" Type thing. So that's an important. That goes with any new technology. Is thinking about who do I need to talk to and sell this to. I don't need to sell it to everyone. I need to sell it to these people because all these other people listen. Uh, so it's just kind of bearing in mind or something like that. That's all I was going to say about Paint Community Center, but it did occur to me while I was doing this. And this is something I'm really quite keen to get some feedback on as much as anything. This talk's a complete draft, but I've been thinking also about as long. We couldn't have a situation where, when I should have decided the laptop there, and it's frankly about as good a description of what we know as anything, and plus reputation through chatting and coming on to these things. Someone was saying about having a badge for here. And it's true. Um, this is my profile on Drupal.org, yeah? And I know I'd like to see this have more things on it about my learning experience with Drupal than the things I do with Drupal.org, okay? So here, I choose these. Nobody else chooses that. Nobody awards me these. Yeah? This list of things that are here. You just choose them from a list when you edit your profile. Yeah? They're not certified by anyone. I could have picked anything I like. I don't because I'm not that kind of person. But it's, it, it starts to give a history of me. There are certain things that actually are off the bottom of this page that are computable, things like your uh, patch history and module contrib status, etc. Yeah? But a lot of these things are automated. And I think if if I felt it was worth it, that, that if people felt that it was worthwhile doing, I'd like to try and work with some people to make that more of a drip a more of a open system. So that places like Drupal County Yorkshire, 
Sound Yorkshire then, didn't I? People <laughs> from Yorkshire. Uh, <laughs> you can't beat it out of me. Uh, <laughs> can award a badge when I've been here. You've got my details. Yeah? And I can add it to this page. Yeah? By adding it to my backpack. If I had a backpack uh, collection called Drupal, I could just add it to that thing. And Drupal can display it. It's not hard to do. Yeah? Easy work for you. Drupal can start to award some of these. I mean, this even looks like a badge. Ironically, they're telling me it's actually just run out, and I know for a fact it hasn't, because I just paid for it about a month ago. When I did, uh, when I paid for Amsterdam, <laughs> so I need to have a word with them. This thing even looks like a badge. Yeah? But it, it, it's not a standard badge that I can take elsewhere. Yeah? And I think it should be. And I want to know, I really want to know if you think that too. Okay? Um, and then there was things like, I'm sure we've all heard of this, but the Acquia doing certification. Oh, that's fine. I think it's a really brilliant thing. I think it's fantastic. But I would also want other places to do certification. Yeah? In Drupal. This isn't just an Acquia thing. Yeah? I think it's great that Acquia are doing it, but I want to see Commerce guys doing it. I want to see, I don't know who else, <laughs> uh, but that, that's a place, yeah? Okay? But I don't want to see it there. I want to see it there. Yeah? And I want to see it along the side, all of the other things I've done. Yeah? I want to see it alongside as my, uh, my DSDM qualification, my ITIL qualification, eventually. Yeah? That's why things like open badges are a big deal. Yeah? Because I am more than the number of Drupal cons I've done and the number of patches I've written. Yeah? I've volunteered at camps. I've, well, I've run a camp, come to think of it, I forgot that. Um, <laughs> um, you, know, you know, all those things that I was talking about at the start, they are relevant to here and tells you, who might be a potential employer, I'm a freelancer, if you want a card, I can give you one, uh, in, in. Uh, then it's, it should be there. You want to see the whole picture of me, not just what Drupal.org can create and what I can make up by taking a box. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about. So that's what I'm thinking about open badges at the moment. Uh, both on the website itself that I built and Drupal.org. Is there any questions? I'd like to hear from Andy Yorkshire about this. You know, there's just one open badges now. Yeah, we can do it. We can talk about that. That uh, web navigation one looks almost like it. Yeah, it does a bit. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's cool. I think um, it's not hard to do, and there are ways on the on the actual uh, open badge website there's a place where you can create an issue badge just without needing your own website to do it. Uh, which is quite useful. So you don't have to run your own issue. No, you don't have to run your own issue up. Okay, so there are other ways of doing it, yes. Yeah. Um, anything else? No, you said you don't need to shift point, but does that provide integration with things like views and rules so that you just create badges and avoid them with no, you have to code. Yeah. Yeah. Um, however, it's by definition of the fact that I've done it, it's not hard code. Um, it's it's not it's not big stuff. I mean, literally, it's creating an array and returning it in a particular function. Um, it's not crazy. Um, it would be possible, and I know that there's some guys made a distribution that's looking to use achieve achievements module and others to, let me get this right, to allow you to create and issue badges without needing to code. Yeah. So what it does is it kind of writes the 
data structure in the background based upon things that you do. But it's quite a big distribution, and whether you'd want to use all of that in a site of your own is a question that only you can answer. Uh, it wasn't right for me in, in, in this case, apart from the fact that it was very early within development when I started on this. Um, and for me, personally, writing the code was easier because it gave us a chance to version control the badges, etc. You definitely want badges to not be ephemeral. They need to hang around. Yeah? When you've made a badge, you've made a badge. Yeah? Because if you've issued it to someone, and then you take the site away, kind of you've lost that ability to certify that badge. Yeah? So you want to kind of think that through a little bit. Does, does Mozilla's spec include the possibility of expiring badges? Yes. Right. Yeah, and, and manually revoking them as well. Yeah, so if somebody's being a naughty person, then you could revoke their badge for being a nice person. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to write the code in order to create badges and issue them. Once you have badges and assign them, is there a UI for managing those views, like a block to put them on someone's page? Or uh, there is a block to put them on. Um, hang on. I did that. Go over here. By extension, the question is how badges are stored in Google. <laughs> They're not. Well, badges are stored however you want to store yeah. them. The achievements module stores them uh, as achievements, and they're not very accessible. Actually, okay. I wasn't there. You can't. Find, I've not found a way of finding them in views, okay. for want of a better description. So I had to. Uh, it provides help functions for grabbing the list of badges for a person and um, then iterating through the yeah. data structure it provides, then you can just display it as a view block, yeah. uh, which I found. Actually, I learned a few things doing it, which is good. I need a badge for it, really. Uh -huh. um, but <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's more of a... It's a, work, it's a web developer's task yeah. to build so those blocks. So achievement module is kind of a group of concepts that badges work in Drupal, whereas there might be different ways of doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Achievement module is a, is a method of doing achievements. I used it to implement badges. Um, now, if you could do it another way, I think achievement module works, actually. I think it's kind of cool. Um, I think for the purpose of what I was attempting to do was the right choice. Yeah? And what I'm trying to say though is it won't be every time. You might build a site where you think, actually, no, that's not what I want. Uh, and that would be acceptable also. You know? Um, all you need to do is throw out the right data. Yeah? That's all that Open Badges cares about. How you achieve that is up to you. Yeah, and I, I want to make that clear, I think, really, rather than saying use these modules, because I think it's more to it than that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I mean, yeah, achievements does work, but it's... I think if I was writing achievements myself, I'd probably think more in terms of entity bits and yeah. pieces so that it would make life easier with views and so on. Yeah, I think that would be better. And if Mobius, Mobius, something like that is then, uh, was to talk about a Drupal 8 version, I think I'd kind of encourage him in the direction of entities, etc. cetera. Yeah. Well, because it would be easy then. Yeah, it would be easy. Anything else for you? I've got a related question. In the info book, you said there was a field for storage, and it looked like it had maybe the name of a table in that field. So is it that where all the... Information. Uh, the storage literally stores a counter per person. Yeah? Wow. So you, it's a counter. So what you're saying is, I mean, yeah, it is stored in, in tables in the database, you know, but it's not that one. Uh, the storage uh, field in that array was for storing a counter that you can increment. Um, so I was incrementing a counter. That's something that you added. 
No, 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 no. These are standard part of the achievements module. Oh. Yeah. But well, the badge information has to come externally. No, the badge information is stored within the achievements module. Right. Yeah. The the yeah, achievements so module does handle it. Yeah, they just, you've got to write it. Yeah. 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 But those fields are standard. The only field that I added was the criteria field. Yeah. I was just saying that it was kind of a, a random discovery of mine that you can add extra things. So if you wanted to add a field that said um, we only give this badge to really tall people, which I think is a really good thing. Um, <laughs> then, then you know you could have a field around silly cold silly criteria, yeah. And then when you create your blocks and your pages to show about the badges, you can just find that field and display it, yeah. Can you validate criteria? Is it just, it's just text, it's just information. It's just it's information, yeah. So but is this person over five if they're not, they can't have a Well, yeah, because you would do that and when, in however, so if you had a registration form, yeah. you would hook into the, so saving the registration information about a person, new profile hook, yeah, uh, and say, check if, it, if that person was more than five feet ten tall, and if they were, Go through and award all the badges that are relevant to people over five foot ten. Yeah, but it's just code. You just need to write it. Yeah. If, if I need to do it, I need to Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> I'll certainly submit it. Yeah. Which means I'll need to do it in Sunderland so that I can get some practice. <laughs> but I think I I just think it's a, a fun. It's a really interesting kind of thing, the whole badges and learning. I, I love it. I've, it's been such a brilliant project to do. Um, OK, they're a good client, which kind of helps. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting subject. There are so many business opportunities for offering training within the group and community. I mean, it's been a huge headache for years, the accreditation. Issue. Yeah, I mean, I think, because he, you don't need the issuer of accreditation to be anybody in particular. But what you do need to do is advertise it in the right place. And the right place to advertise your accreditations is Drupal.org. Well, Lullabot did it. Yeah. Before. Yeah, Lullabot did it. And it's cool. It and I, it didn't get any traction because who cares who Lullabot? People don't go to Lullabot to find out if the contractor that they've taken on. Is any good? Yeah, that's the missing part. Yeah, this provides, this provides it. Yeah. That's why it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So more. It's kind of the reason. The reasons why when I was young, uh, when I was young and first went to university, university was full of some Microsystems kit, and the reason for that was because. Um, they knew giving it cheap to universities meant that I would get used to using nice fancy kit and I would expect it when I got into, into real work. Okay? Now, and, and that's what people do these things for. It's the reason uh, Apple do education discounts, it's the reason they all do it. Yeah? This is the same. This is why getting open badges into young people is a good thing. It's because then they, they move on and they expect, and they think it's natural. They think, well, why doesn't the rest of the world do this? Yeah? OK? I know they've already started something for the last year with the kids. What they're saying, they've got a lot of kids now, especially like folk books and things, that they've got like a record of achievement while they've done at school, but might like really look like they've got like a bad book and they're asking for but there's no evidence of any sort of. Yeah, and it's having that method of so anybody can sort of say, look, yeah, we're doing this really good thing. We can tell people why we're a good organization, which is why the badges have a link back to the organization. Yeah, yeah? saying, look, we're, we're worth listening to. We think this this person has done these useful things. Here's his badge. 
yeah, we reckon he's good. But that that person needs needs it not to be on the Raspberry Pi website because that's pointless. Yeah. Yeah. Because an employee is not going to go look there. Yeah. Yeah. So it needs to be in a central place, and that's why the idea of these backpacks is such a big deal. Yeah. And so you can put your badges and then choose which ones you want to show. I wouldn't want to show badges about. Uh, I wouldn't want to show a fence if I had a fencing instructor badge. Yeah, my great one foil. I'll tell you, I'm not bad. Because uh, I'm ironic actually, because I'm, I'm not a bad teacher at it. I'm rubbish actual fencer. Uh, um, so I forgot where I was going with that now. So I wouldn't want to show my fencing badge on the Drupal.org website. That would be crazy. And that's the idea of being able to have public collections and choose what appears where. Yeah, that's important. Well, you, the person manages their own backpack. That's the important thing. Yeah, absolutely. You, I, I would suggest that Drupal.org, when it does a displayer, looks for any collections that mention Drupal. Or it lets you add on your Drupal.org profile a link to the right collection they have to Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that would be perfect, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. It's something I really want to do. So it's it's finding getting hold of the right people uh, and taking like connections. Like as well. so like uh, yes, 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 they do. You've got your Drupal.org yeah. page now. You can fill in your Facebook, your Twitter, your whatever. Uh, so my badges, just yeah. Just have a feel saying my, my triple yeah. This or that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But I would also want to take my Drupal.org badges onto LinkedIn. So anything issued by Drupal onto LinkedIn. Not that I ever take much notice of LinkedIn for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Groups endorsing your skills. Yeah, but they don't. Somebody I met in a pub endorses my skills. It's like. You know. I think. I'm sorry, I'm just going to say, I think the problem with it is that they people, they, they, they've got people to endorse this, and then they people to endorse everybody. Yeah. Because yeah. cause that way they'll get endorsed back. It's a, it's a broken system. Yeah. It's a completely yeah. broken system. I got endorsed with design once. I've never claimed. <laughs> I have seen your spacesuit. It's pretty damn designed. <laughs> <laughs> Anything anything else? That's it then. So we turn that thing off. Can I just have a one one last vote? Um, we're not talking about the date for next year.